بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning girls. Before we start our class today, let's pray together first. Everyone please say basmalah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, mashallah. Okay, girls, I hope everyone is well today. And today, of course, it, we are going to finish our uh, presentations. Now, the presentation was, uh, the topic was the history of Islam in America. And I love that you girls are learning about this learning about your Islamic history in different parts of the world. And especially with Western countries, this is probably a topic that you don't learn about often. You may learn about uh, the history of things that you, uh, the history of Islam, uh, the stories that you hear from the Quran, but it's also good to learn um, about different parts of the world too, especially about Western Western countries too. There is also a history we found out. Yeah, uh, the, we started to learn about the history and mashallah from doing this presentation, uh, some of you have taken it even that much further and researched on your own additional information that we hadn't even gone over in this topic when we when we talked about it in class together. So, um, uh, yeah, it just it just makes me very happy that you girls are learning about this. And why we did this topic was it was to give you an opportunity to practice the skills that we had learned in our public speaking class or what we had what we had learned in the public speaking class was three skills that are very necessary when you have to speak in front of groups of people <coughs> the first one was clarity how to slow down and try to speak uh, speak clearly yeah and that's what you should pay attention to when you're giving your presentation today the second skill was about confidence how to speak um, looking like you are confident even though sometimes you don't feel it speaking with vocal presence having a nice strong voice having eye contact with the people that you're talking to maybe even using your hands to make it interesting and uh, to get your point across, yeah. Also, using pitch and tone and pausing uh, to make your presentation interesting. Don't forget to do those, some of those things today, also when you're giving your presentation. And the last of the skills was uh, credibility. Credibility: how to organize your information well, and how to add things into your presentation to make it interesting. We said you can add quotes, you can add stories, you can add statistics, or you could also add um, but yeah, quotes, stories, statistics, and the last was uh, what else, yeah, girls? You remember? Quotes, stories, statistics, and oh, say maybe sayings. Yeah, something. It's almost the same. Yeah, as quotes. But how to add something into it to make it a little bit more interesting? Oh, questions and questions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> to try to draw your audience in, get them interactive, get them involved in what you're talking about, uh, to get them interested, yeah, to make your presentation more interesting. Okay, so last week, our first group has already gone. That first group was Firneta, Chiara, Atifa, Fatia, Aisha, and then Gadiza, is Gadiza with you with us today? 
Betty, is that she here? No. Okay. All right. Uh, she was the one that couldn't make it yeah, last time. So today, <coughs> excuse me, girls. Today we will take group two. Group two is Nayaka, Hanifa, Nufa, Karina, and Alsha. Are you girls ready? Are you ready to give your presentation today? Okay, I see Nufa. I see Elsha. I see Hanifa. Where is, oh, I see Karina, but I don't see Nayaka. Nayaka, is she here? Yesterday she was sick. Oh no, okay, okay. It's okay. So what you do is continue the presentation today. And if you'd like, you can just skip over her part and then we'll have Gadiza and um, Nayaka when they're feeling better, when they're here with us to read their part of the presentation, the presentation. And don't forget also, when we're finished today, please send me, uh, please send me the, the presentation. Eh, girls, last week you used a PowerPoint, right? You yeah. use slides. Okay. Those slides, if you can send it to Miss Erica and the girls for today, are you using slides or are you just, are you just uh, presenting? Uh, we're using slides. Oh, okay. Okay. So when you're finished, uh, send me your slides, send me your slides as well. Okay, girls, the time is yours. Don't forget, please open your video. And I would like to see from your neck up. I'd like to see at least your face. Um, that gives you the grade for um, the confidence. Yeah, the grade for confidence. Don't be nervous. Everything's gonna be just fine. It's just us, it's just us, but it's a great way to practice. Okay, so who's gonna go first? Oh, I need to make somebody the host yet or the co-host. So you can share the slides. Who who should I make? Who's going to be sharing the slides? Is it Nufa? Oh, Karina. Okay, Karina, I'm gonna make you the. Oh, I cannot make you the co-host. I'll just make you the host. Okay. Whenever you're ready, you may begin. Please don't forget to say Bismillah before you start. So, breathe deep, breathe deep, no fat. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikum salam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Life aboard on a slave ship. Did you know, from 1525 to 1866, millions of Africans were taken from their homeland. They transported across the Atlantic and forced to work in brutal conditions. Before boarding the ships at African port cities, the enslaved people were stripped of their clothes and saved their head before shopping them on deck to live in temporary wanted structures until the crew were ready to sit still. They were separated by gender and age. Adult men were kept separate, separately, separately and shaklet in pairs. Women, women usually left unchained in their design, designed comp compartment and, chil and children and children are free to move above the ship. Enslaved 
people were also subject to force exercise, which sometimes include dance and song for the entertainment. While women, they forced to enter rap and sexually upset by the crew. Some female, some female slaves even pregnant. The women often really being against their character with little of their freedom, but these relevance, relevance were seldom successful. They will have no way to clean themselves. Disease spreads all over the ship. Dysentery, malaria, yellow fever, smallpox, measles, and influenza ravaged the enslaved and crew members alike. <clears throat> After a two month journey, 62 enslaved people and seven crew members died without reaching their destination. He claims it needs to be done, it stops the disease. In the trail, between opening Zong and their insurance company, the court agreed with the ship owner, but the court itself exposed the horrors of the sh of the Zong ship. This shows this shows that this tragedy can happen on any ship. Twenty four years there are often Zong trials. International slave the trade is prohibited in Great Britain and the United States. Thanks for listening. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, Masya Allah. Barakalafik, very good job, girls. You took, um, you made this presentation your own. So you decided to focus, um, more of your focus was on uh, talking about how the slaves were treated when they were on the ships and how they were brought over from Africa. And yeah, a lot of these Africans that came over were Muslims. So um, I think it was about 10%, yeah, 10% of the population um, <clears throat> that came over were Muslim. So it's a different way to take the presentation, but it's still, it's still a wonderful way to do it. Uh, talking about how they were treated because they were treated absolutely terribly. So one of the things that I really enjoyed about your presentation was that, um, first of all, one of the skills that we learned in our public speaking was clarity, slowing down, trying to pronounce the words clearly. Uh, that part was really good, it was really good. But I think that maybe it might've been a good idea maybe to do a little bit more practice because there were some difficult words. <coughs> yeah, there were some difficult words in your presentation and um, maybe, maybe we needed a little bit more practice with them pronouncing, to, to be able to pronounce them a little bit more clearly, a little bit more clearly, or to even Google. Now we have uh, Google capabilities, yeah? We can search up a word on Google and figure out how to pronounce it, how to pronounce it uh, well, yeah? Um, you could have, that also could have been something that would have helped you a little bit better with some of those difficult words. But mashallah, I like the information that you gave. It was well organized. Um, your voices, mashallah, for the most part, were very, you had a nice strong voice when you gave your presentation. Um, you paused. <clears throat> you paused at different parts of your presentation when you were talking about things that had happened, especially about the, the women who had been raped. Yeah. Um, I really heard the emotion yeah, in your voice, which is good, which is very good. Um, you, you gave stories yeah, about what happened to them. Um, ah, I saw in the very end, you had a quote you had a quote at the very end of your presentation. That quote at the end was that was uh, Nayaka's part. Is that her, that, that quote at the very end was that Nayaka's part? Yeah, uh, Karina? 
at the very end of your slides, you had a quote. Was oh, that was Nayaka's part? Okay, okay. So that's why nobody read that part yet. Yeah. Okay, but that's very good. That's something that I told you to add. I told you to add in. Uh, something that you needed to add in to make it interesting, to make it interesting. And the information that you gave also made it quite interesting about the tragedies that happened to these Africans as they were captured and brought to America. Um, let's see. So we talked about skill, we talked about um, clarity, about confidence and about uh, credibility. Mashallah, you covered all of them, girls. You did a good job. Next time, my only uh, comment yeah, or suggestion is next time, practice just a little bit more so that some of those difficult words for you to say become a little bit easier when you give the presentation. Um, <clears throat> maybe research some of those hard words so that you can pronounce them a little bit better. So I have a question, girls. When did you practice together when you were, before you gave the presentation today? Did you practice all together? I'm sorry? Karina? Yes, Karina? After you put all the presentation together on the slides, did you practice it together before class today? No. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And that's okay. That's okay. But maybe for next time, yeah? Next time, remember, it's better to, to practice a little bit. Go over it a few times so that you become more comfortable with what, what you need to say. And so that some of those difficult words for you to say, you can practice them a little bit more. Practice them a little bit more. But other than that, mashallah, mashallah, barakallah, fiq, you did an excellent job today, girls. Very good. Now, we only had two groups, so we are finished, mashallah. This has been a really long topic, yeah, because we went from public speaking, from the skills, straight into the history of Islam in America, and continue this public speaking um, skill practice with the presentation that you just gave today. Well, I see you girls moving in the right direction. I see you starting to understand, yeah? How you have to act, what you need to do when you have to speak in front of others. And that is very important. And it's a very good skill for you to learn and for you to practice because you will definitely need that in your future, in your future. Okay, well, we have a few more minutes left in the class. I will tell you about what our next topic is. Our next topic, drum roll, yes, not really, um, but uh, our next topic is going to be learning how to describe a person giving lots of details. We are going to do, it's a three-part class and each part we will go through it together and you will write your part, each part of this description together with me in class, yeah? I've got examples, I have uh, things to help you to go through the process. But that's going to be our next topic, um, learning how to describe a person, a person that you know well with details. So what I need you to do for next week's class before we start this topic is I need you to pick one person that you would like to talk about. Pick one person that you would like to talk about. Now, this person should be someone that you know very well. Do not pick a person that's a celebrity or even a sahabat or 
um, something like that, because I think it might be difficult for you to <coughs> describe the person. The three parts, the first one that we're going to do, uh, do is describing the appearance, what the person looks like, okay? The second part is describing the personality, what this person is like, yeah? Are they kind? Are they funny? Are they helpful? Are they hardworking? Yeah, describing the person. And the last part that you're gonna have to describe is your relationship with that person. How long you've known the person, what things you have in common. So it's, it's really detailed. So this is why you need to pick a person that you know really well. Mom, dad, a brother, sister, a best friend, you could do also a best friend, a classmate, um, maybe even a teacher is also okay, but it needs to be somebody that you know really well that <laughs> you wouldn't have any trouble um, writing the three different parts of this de description. So that's your assignment for next week is to think about it. Who, but it's only one person, yeah. What one person would you like to describe? What one person? It could also be a cousin, an aunt or an uncle, a grandmother or a grandfather. It's also okay, okay. Uh, someone to pick, someone that you're close to is what I mean. Pick someone that you're close to for this next uh, topic next topic to make it easier for you to, to do the, the, the description the description well you girls did such an excellent job today i'm very proud of you um keep up the practice yeah and after we finish this next topic you will also be be presenting again but this time you will be on your own you will be one by one um, presenting or talking about the person, describing a person that you, that you know well, that you know well. So the next one will be a presentation, but not in a group anymore. You will be on your own. But it's a process. It's a process. We're going to do all the steps together. We're going to work on it together. I'm going to help you. I'm not going to leave you. Don't worry. We're going to take three classes, three classes to finish this. So inshallah, you will get as much help as you need. And then in the end, you're going to put all the parts together and you're going to read it in the class to us. Okay, girls, our time is up for today. It's eight o'clock. Thank you so much for coming to Native English class. Please don't forget to tell the two girls that have who have not presented yet that if they can uh, to come to next week's class and we'll try to fit in their parts of the presentation next week, next week, if they're feeling better, inshallah. All right, let's end our class today by saying kafarat al-majlis. Thank you, girls.